This video is sponsored by Gigabyte. I don't take sponsorships on things that I don't like, and it turns out I like these monitors a lot. So here's a whole video on them. The PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X have been out for a whole year now. Both are capable of 4K resolutions at 120 frames per second. I'm willing to bet that not many of you have gotten a chance to experience everything these powerhouse consoles have to offer, because there's not much technology out there that allows you to do that. It's really hard to find powerful enough stuff. These high resolutions and frame rates require HDMI 2.1 in order to handle all of that bandwidth through HDMI. There's a decent amount of HDMI 2.1 TVs out there right now, although they do get pretty pricey. But there's not very many HDMI 2.1 gaming monitors. Gigabyte sent me not one, but two of their M32U gaming monitors. It's a massive upgrade to my desk setup. Not only are they gorgeous, which is usually the most you can ask out of a gaming monitor these days, they also allow me to fully utilize the power of all my fancy new devices. From these powerful consoles to a powerful PC and even my new MacBook. And they come with some features that change the way I work and interact with all this stuff. It's worth noting, this is sponsored, but Gigabyte didn't tell me what to say in this video. They just gave me a sheet with bullet points about all of the features. So I'm really just trying these things out for myself and tell you my experience. I had just made a video over on my personal channel about my desk setup with my new MacBook and everything, the thing that I use for most of my work. And it's already out of date because of this. Previously, I had one 4K 120 hertz monitor and one ultra wide. It wasn't exactly my ideal setup, it's just what I had, and it worked fine. Now I have two proportionately sized monitors. 32 inches is massive, and having two of them is a bit overkill. Live streaming video games basically requires you to have two monitors, so you can have the game on one monitor and the chat and OBS and other streaming tools on the other monitor. Otherwise, if I didn't live stream, I would probably just be fine with one monitor. It's less distracting and there's plenty of screen real estate for everything that I normally wanna do when I'm not streaming. But let's live in excess for a little bit because it is pretty damn cool. Like I said from the start, the big draw here is that these are 4K 120 hertz through HDMI. So this display can show off the full power of the new consoles and it is very pretty. PC gamers have been singing the praises of high frame rates for years now. You might have seen monitors that are like 1080p, but up to 240 hertz or something. I'm primarily a dirty console pleb, so I've never really experienced high frame rates like that before. With most of the games that I play, I'm totally fine with like 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, whatever. As long as it's a consistent frame rate, I value the quality of the game way more than the frame rate until I started playing like competitive first person shooters. And then I got these new consoles and I got a chance to experience what that high frame rate was really like. And oh boy, it, it makes a difference to your eyeballs. Movement is so much cleaner and nicer in 120 Hertz. You won't be able to experience it through this video because it wasn't shot in 120 Hertz and YouTube won't even allow you to upload a video that's 120 Hertz. But with a setup like this, even with one of these $500 game boxes, being able to get 4K ultra high definition and these high frame rates is kind of insane. This monitor also has a one millisecond response time. 
So yeah, those high frame rates are something that you might want for competitive gaming, but that response time is probably more important. Now you could just get a TV that can do 4K 120 Hertz. Those can get pretty pricey. I personally much prefer playing games at a desk instead of slumped down in my couch. I totally understand why people would want to do that though. For some, gaming is a relaxing experience. I live in New York. I don't have a lot of room. I like having my personal space. And it also kind of helps that this is my job. So when I'm like playing games, it's usually for work. So I, I can't be dozing off while I'm doing it. So this is my workstation. And it's been kind of hard to find another 4K 120 hertz monitor that could make the most out of these new consoles for this setup. I don't wanna have to play out in my living room just to get 4K 120 out of my Xbox. But there's more benefit here. These are actually 144 hertz panels. So if you plug in your computer via DisplayPort or even USB-C, you can get 4K up to 144 hertz clean. And it looks gorgeous, of course. DisplayPort is cool, but that's been around forever. Everybody who has a computer has used one of those. I was shocked and what these things are capable of over USB-C. This is two 4K videos from YouTube playing over USB, -C. one single Thunderbolt 4 split out into two USB-Cs. You should be more impressed than you are. It took me a really long time to figure out how to do all this. Apparently I had a, I had a bad USB-C cable. Now this MacBook is very powerful, but apparently it's not powerful enough to do 144 or even 120 hertz to both at the same time while in 4K. So I limit it to 60, which for a MacBook is more than enough. I do most of my work on Mac, which is why I love these monitors so much. At the base here, you see it says KVM series. On the back, there's this little toggle button for toggling around menu items. And above that, there's a big KVM button. So this is gonna sound a lot more complicated than it is, but it's very exciting for me. So you're gonna have to hear it. Essentially, if you have two computers, that one button will swap between the two computers, keyboard, mouse, and everything. So I have my keyboard, my mouse, and my audio interface plugged in through the USB 3.0 ports on the bottom. So I have my MacBook plugged in through USB-C and my PC plugged in through DisplayPort and USB-B. So pressing the KVM button on the back will not only change the display mode from USB-C over to DisplayPort, but it'll also change the USB controller from USB-C to USB-B. So pressing that KVM button swaps all of this over to be all of this, and it controls flawlessly. And of course, on the other monitor, you can just set it to automatic input and it'll just automatically switch over to whatever input is sending out a signal. I try not to leave both on. I try to turn off my MacBook if I'm gonna turn on my PC. This is really just so I can use my keyboard, mouse, and audio interface on both setups without having to unplug anything. All I have to do is press one button. It's awesome. I'm surprised by this feature because it's a very niche thing to even want. And I'm more surprised that there's three USB 3.0 ports, which is the exact number of things I wanna switch off between the two computers. There's also stereo three watt speakers in these monitors, which are as good as you can expect monitors speakers to be. But the important feature is that it has a headphone jack, which is essential for console gaming. In order to have a latency free experience when streaming console games, I like to have my gameplay looped through a second monitor via HDMI and the audio coming out of that display so that I can hear it in real time. I'm like shocked every time I hear this, but I'm pretty sure that all of the other streamers that I know just listen to their console audio through OBS and they're just totally fine with that. That would make me lose my mind. This monitor also comes with cables. What a novel concept. HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort, USB-B, and even three different power cables for different regions. And no power brick. It's just a regular old power cable. And this big beefy hunk of a metal stand. It has other gaming features too, 
V-Sync allows the monitor and graphics card to sync with each other to reduce screen tearing, which I learned is very useful if your graphics card isn't the best. But there's a mode on these monitors called Aim Stabilizer Sync, which enables V-Sync and reduces motion blur at the same time. You know how sometimes when you start a game for the first time, it'll make you set the darkness level and you're always like, yeah, that's fine, I can't see the image anymore. Well, now you don't have to lie anymore. The black equalizer on here gives you more detail in the dark parts of the image without overexposing the whites. You can also enable the crosshairs if you want to, like, try to get a bullseye in Ocarina of Time. Ah! What the monitor doesn't come with is skill. As fun as these monitors are to game on, I will probably be spending 99% of my time working over here. I talk more about video games than I do actually play them, which saddens me to think about. A lot of gaming monitors favor things like a fast response time and ignore color accuracy as a trade-off. These are IPS panels, and they allow 10 bits of color, which is 1,073,741,824 colors. I only shoot in 8-bit because this is YouTube, but if I ever wanted to like, I don't know, color grade a low budget feature film, I could do that on here. The high resolution and, and IPS panels have been great for video work and design work though. So it's really nice that these are monster monitors, not only for gaming, which is what I do, but also for all of the work I'm gonna be doing here too. Also, a nice little overlooked feature that shouldn't really be a feature, but that's where we are at this point in this industry. If you wanna switch the inputs, you can just switch the inputs. It's that easy. On my previous monitor, sometimes you would have to access the settings in order to change the input, but you couldn't get to the settings menu if there was nothing displaying on the monitor, which kind of gets in the way of changing the input from one that's blank to one that's live. Of course, it's even easier here with the KVM because it's just one button. I, I appreciate the user experience here. It's such a simple and dumb thing that you'd think would be really obvious, but it's something that a lot of companies overlook. They, I guess they just don't think we're gonna wanna change inputs on a monitor. I also just wanna mention one last thing about these things and I swear I'm done. It supports low resolutions. Not a lot of modern monitors do that. So if I wanna do something like full screen in N64 game, it actually runs it at native 480p. Look at those crisp pixels on that butt. Anyway, if you couldn't tell, I love these things a lot. I needed a new HDMI 2.1 monitor for the studio, and I didn't expect to love these things as much as I do, and I definitely didn't expect to get two of them. So thank you very much, Gigabyte. And I also definitely didn't expect them to have this KVM feature that totally changes the way my setup works with my MacBook and, and my desktop. It solves a lot of problems for me. One thing I will note though, is that this monitor does not come with a USB-C cable, so make sure you get a good one, one that's capable of high bandwidth if you wanna get the 4K up to 144 hertz out of whatever laptop you got going on. Because I made that mistake, I used a crappy USB-C cable and it took me two days to figure out what the problem was. But we got there in the end, we figured it out. Now I got two gorgeous displays, look at that, it's pretty. I don't know what, what that guy's doing, I just found random 4K looped videos on YouTube. I hope he makes it out of there eventually. Oh no, it's 10 hours long. So what do you guys think about the Gigabyte M32U, these 32 inch monster 4K 120 hertz monitors? I mentioned this a little bit in my last video on that last gaming monitor. I think if you're gonna get a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X and you're gonna play any games that support 4K at 120 hertz, you should probably get yourself a display that's capable of that so you can get the most out of your experience. These guys are 800 each, which believe it or not, is on the cheap end of HDMI 2.1 monitors. You're not gonna find a TV for that, that's for damn sure. And it comes with a stand, which I think makes it cheaper than the one I bought myself earlier this year. Anyway, let me know if this is something that you've ever thought about getting or something you wanna upgrade to in the future. Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter and any and all of this other social media garbage. Of course, we got new videos here all the time. Make sure you've got notifications on so you know when the videos go out or else YouTube might not show you every single one. I'm not talking about the Nintendo Switch today, so who knows how the algorithm's gonna treat this one. 
course, the most important thing you can do to help support this channel is subscribe and share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe has one of the new consoles and maybe could benefit from getting something like this. Maybe they got a beefy, cool PC too that they want to utilize all the power of one of these bad boys. Thank you very much. Have a good week.